Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I'm actually next to Donner Lake right now. Of course, this is the venue for today's Talking at Camera video, still on vacation. Yes, it's called Vacation, incidentally, because my wife booked it. If it's uh, me that's booking it, I call it a holiday, just for clarification. So yeah, um, what I figured I'd talk about today is a series of uh, incidents involving rockets and launch escape systems. Now, the launch escape system as you know, is supposed to allow the crew to escape during the launch. And um, it's only been used once on the ground successfully. Not all launch vehicles have launch escape systems. For example, Gemini had uh, ejector seats, as did Vostok. And uh, the Space Shuttle, of course, had its old, uh, its whole, you know, abort modes, including famously the return to launch site abort mode, which, you know, Pretty interesting to try flying that. But I can think of three times that the launch escape system actually fired, and they were all accidents, incidents, which were all kind of interesting, let's say. So the first one is in the US is, of course, Mercury Redstone 1. Now, this was the first test flight of the combination of the Redstone rocket and the Mercury capsule. And what happened on the very first launch was the engines ignited, the rocket started to move, and then the launch escape tower fired, the rocket stopped moving, parachute shot out, and then a few seconds later, the emergency parachute shot out. It's kind of embarrassing. I mean, at least the rocket didn't explode. That worst case scenario, right? So what happened in this case is that during the pre-launch, when it's sitting on the pad, the rocket had two cables plugged into it, one for data, one for power. And they were supposed to be pulled out in the order of the data cable was pulled out first and then the power cable would get pulled out. Unfortunately, due to parts availability, they got them wrong. And the power cable ended up getting pulled out about a few milliseconds, like 15 milliseconds before the data cable. Now, if you know anything about electronics, you'll know that if you change your ground level, it can cause electricity to flow in different circuits. Electricity just tries to find the shortest route to ground, typically, or in the opposite direction, depending upon whether you're positive or negative. Regardless, pulling out the power caused all the circuits to kind of rearrange themselves, and the electricity ended up flowing back down uh, a particular circuit which caused the engine to shut off. So, you know, after it had moved a few inches, the engine just shut off. And what happened then was the spacecraft launch sequencer took over. The first thing that happened was the, when the engine shut off, it said, oh wait, I was supposed to get rid of the escape tower. So the escape tower fired. The next thing that was supposed to happen was that the rocket had to get rid of uh, the capsule. The capsule would separate from the booster. But it didn't happen because there was a failsafe that said if, the, if there was still gravity being felt, any acceleration being felt, then no, don't wait for this. And the reason why you would do that is because sometimes the engines take a few seconds to stop generating thrust as the last burps of fuel come through. So the capsule didn't separate. But later on in the launch sequencer, there was this check for Am I, am I, has the engine shut down? Am I falling back to Earth? Better fire those parachutes. All it said was, if the engines have stopped firing and there is atmospheric pressure, it start the, uh, shoot out the parachute. And, well, then there was another check in the sequencer that said, if there is no force being felt on the cables holding the parachute on, then the parachute has failed and you should probably fire the emergency parachute. That's why it fired the second parachute. Now, in addition to being kind of embarrassing, this was actually quite dangerous because the rocket had launched and been released from its launch clamps, but now it was sitting fully fueled on the launch pad with parachutes blowing gently in the breeze. And there was some real worry that a wind could blow up and pull the rocket over and cause it to explode. And apparently there was at least one person in mission control that was sufficiently concerned about this possibility that he suggested shooting the rocket you know shooting the rocket to make holes in the fuel tank to let the fuel out quicker 
thankfully they decided that they shouldn't make a situation worse and so they they just let it sit there and a few hours later the power shut down and the uh the, the next day they just let it all uh you know they recovered it and everything was fine okay so the second launch escape system failure that i want to talk about is the first Soyuz launch. Now this was actually going to be a dual launch with two spacecraft launching into orbit and demonstrating autonomous docking. So the one that I'm interested in is obviously the one that was sitting on the launch pad and uh, it fired its engines, started to launch, and then it turns out that one of the engines didn't ignite. So the automated system shut down and cancelled the launch. This was, of course, back when they were still lighting the engines using giant eight-foot matches. So the, en you know, so the rocket settled back onto the uh, pad. People started working to save the rocket. And uh, about 27 minutes later, the launch escape system fired, carrying the capsule free from the rocket. And that would have been fine, except that doing that, it also managed to break a bunch of hydraulic lines start a fire in the rocket and then about a minute later the whole thing exploded ended up killing somebody on the ground unfortunately now why did this happen why did the capsule 27 minutes after a failed launch suddenly decided that it wasn't having any more of this sitting around in the ground well when they started it up the capsule had got the command telling it that it was launched so of course it switches over to its internal systems and one of those internal systems is a fail safe that was to make sure that the launch escape system would fire in the event of things going wrong that might be outside the remit of other systems. So what it would do was, in this, well, the one that triggered this, it was reading the gyroscope. And the gyroscope showed a deviation of about seven and a half degrees from what it expected it should be. So that caused it to trigger the launch escape system. Now, why did the gyroscope shift by seven and a half degrees because the earth rotated by about seven and a half degrees in 27 minutes the earth rotates at about one degree every four minutes so yeah literally <laughs> this is this failure only happened because the earth rotates um, the other half of that mission incidentally was launched it was called cosmos 133 in orbit and uh, it didn't do so well either it uh lost control of its stability systems and you basically ended up spinning around slowly in orbit at about 2 rpm before uh, getting commanded to return to earth it uh, ended up that it was going to fall over china so they decided to self-destruct it for security reasons and yeah people found uh, some nice pictures of it there's a japanese astronomer who apparently sketched the whole thing it's kind of cool so the third case of a launch escape system that uh, I actually is actually a legitimate use of a launch escape system because there was crew involved. Is a Soyuz mission to Salyut Seven in 1983. Lake Donner rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Lake Donner rocks. Yes. So. Um, so yeah, in 1983, a Soyuz rocket sitting on the pad. A fire starts and starts to consume the rocket. And the crew is sitting here on top of this giant fuel tank, getting a little concerned about uh, just how much fire is going on. Back in mission control, they try to trigger the launch uh, escape system, but the cables are broken. The crew can't trigger the launch escape system because their cables are damaged by the fire. So uh, it fell to some other guys sitting out in a blockhouse, you know, fair distance from the pad they were able to send a signal by radio and trigger the launch escape system on the ground and um well it's it's interesting that apparently vladimir titov who was one of the crew involved when interviewed on western media said the first thing that they did after this launch after this activated was to <laughs> disable the in-flight voice recording because they were swearing and that was obviously something that uh, astronauts were not meant to be doing <laughs> i don't know if what the soviet what standard soviet media had for its astronauts but yeah it's a fascinating set of stories i love all this stuff so yeah i'll be back with uh, more stories tomorrow but uh yeah from donner lake uh we're not on fire here thankfully i'm scott manley fly safe <laughs>